This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Sunset Trail travel trailer, model number 188BH, as in bunkhouse. Okay, so we'll just go over some of the features. All right, um, just so we know, first of all, this this trailer does have a solar panel on it, and it also has a a power inverter so it inverts from 12 volt DC to um, 110 AC so keep that in mind I'll talk to you more about that I'm trying to get a view of the solar panel there you can see it up there right there at that angle okay so we'll go over all of that so you have regular crank down stabilizer jacks it takes a three quarter inch crank or a, a socket on a three-quarter inch six-point socket on a drill. All right. This is your water heater here. Right now, this water heater is. First of all, it works both gas and electric. But right now, this water heater is is empty, as you can see. There's the plug or the cap. It's empty and it's bypassed right now. So um, I don't know if you. I don't know what you know about winterizing and, and, and dewinterizing trailers, but this one right now is winterized. So there's antifreeze in it, the water heater's bypassed, and it's empty. So the reason I'm telling you this is you, you have to remember that before you use this in the uh, spring or summer, uh, once you, uh, you uh, flush all the antifreeze out and fill it with water, make sure you fill your fresh water or, or your water heater tank right here. Um, before you turn it on, you can't run it dry. So uh, you always want to rem remember, like let, let's say you, you'll basically hook your city water hose up in your driveway or your storage, wherever you're at. And then um, after you've flushed all the water out, you'll put the, the valves on the back of this uh, water heater, you'll put them into camping mode, right? Then you'll turn on the hot water and just, it'll start, air will start coming out of the, the uh, you know the the uh, faucet because uh, you're pushing the air out of the hot water tank eventually it'll be a mixture of air and water and, and after a little bit it'll come out solid water when it's solid water coming out of the hot water uh, you know that it's filled so you always want to make sure you fill it before you turn it on because if you don't you'll damage it so keep that in mind uh, I'll show you the switches to operate this when we get inside okay just remember you always want to have water in it before you use it. I say that because it's surprising how many people, if it's if they're just, if they're new at if they're new at this. I don't know if you're new or not, but if they're new at it, they'll they'll tend to forget that. So, all right. So this is uh, storage, and you have a refrigerator, of course. Okay. This is the service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there. It's just for uh, servicing your refrigerator. You have a power awning with LED strip. Um, one thing to remember about this one is you can see the awning arm is right here. So if you have your door open too far, you're going to hit the awning arm, or the awning arm is going to hit the door. So you remember you want it perpendicular there at a, at a right angle uh, so you can send the awning in and out without hitting the door. Okay. I uh, mentioned outside speakers. Uh, this is your furnace vent right here. Okay. Alrighty, so you you with this one you ordered a uh, a hitch so you get a Husky center line weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. That's a good one, and um, we'll show you how that operates when you pick up. Okay, we'll show you how to hitch and unhitch that sort of thing. Okay, um, well, let's look inside see what we've got here. We come around the other side. Okay. All right, so um, you have a 20-pound LP tank, right? You've got a deep cycle marine battery, and you've got a kill switch for the battery. That can shut the battery, disconnect it from the, from the trailer itself. So you can uh, actually disconnect the battery just by turning that. Um, if you come inside here, let me get my flashlight on in case I need it here. Okay. Here we have the solar controller right that's for the solar panel and then we have an inverter here inversion is taking 12 volt DC from the battery 
and inverting it to 110 AC. Therefore, you can you can run appliances uh, like a, a a blender or or something that that only that you have that works on AC power. You're able to run that off battery. So that's what, that's the whole idea. All trailers have a converter, which is just the opposite of inversion. The converter takes 110 AC and and it converts it to 12 volt DC, right? Um, this does the opposite. This is inversion. Your switches are right here, and that's a kill switch for it right there too. So you keep that in mind. You can you can shut it off right there. Okay. So right now, if you can see, this is very difficult to see. I know. If you can see it, right now we're getting 1.8 amps from the sun that's being converted to electricity and, and stored in your battery. So you're gaining 1.8, 1.9 in that area, 1.6, okay? Um, you have a wet, a fl in this case they call it a flooded battery, which is just a regular, regular deep cycle marine battery, okay? So if I push this, let me get around to the other side here. Right now you've got 14.1 volts in your battery, which is perfect. If I, you're only going to push B. You're only going to push B. The, the A you don't have to worry about. That's just for setting the battery. So let me come back around again. Then the next one is, is amp gain. So you see the picture of the sun pointing at the solar panel. We're getting 1.8, 1.7, 1.6 in that area. If I push it again, you're 100% charged. Everything is going strong. Uh, you push B again, and that's amp hours. That's how much storage you have in there. You get all that just by pushing B. Now you can you can use the solar panel in emergency. Let's say you could you could plug right into that USB and, and charge your phone, for example. Um, there's an app for this if you want to use the app on your phone. Plus, there's plenty of literature inside the trailer for it too. Um, so that's the gen generally that's the general uh, 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 directions on how it's used. Um, if you fill your battery, I mean, if if you come here and it says this says screen says F U L and it's flashing and none of the buttons will work it's telling you that your battery is full there's no there's no room to store any more electricity in it so the, the uh, solar panel has temporarily shut off um, until the battery drops once your battery the amount of uh, energy in your battery drops it'll go back to your normal screen right but if it says FUL and flashes it's just telling you um, it's not doing anything right now because it's totally totally charged and uh, it's like I said, as soon as the the uh, the uh, power drops in it, it'll go back to the screen. So okay, um, so inverter which inverts AC to DC, or I'm sorry, <laughs> inversion which inverts DC to AC power. You have uh, your solar controller for your solar panel on the roof, right, and a kill switch for it. Plus switches right on the uh, the uh, inverter itself. Okay. Uh, just so you know, this is just a, this is just a uh, reducer to reduce your 30 amp um, shore core down to a 20 amp in case you need to plug in at home. Just gives you an extra option if you don't have places to plug in. Okay. Um, just so you know, over here, you can see it better from the other side. I'm not going to go into depth, much depth, but that's where you would draw the antifreeze into your trailer. You see your pump is there. There's some valves. So that's the hose that you would use. There is a hose there that you'll actually draw the antifreeze from a jug of antifreeze into your trailer using your water pump when you winterize, okay? All right. So this is where you get water to the trailer. These are the, the two most common ways, the, or the most common way is the city water hookup right there. So you're just gonna hook the hose up, turn it on, and all the plumbing's gonna work, right? If you're camping someplace that doesn't have city water, um, uh, boondocking or, or wherever, uh, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and use the onboard pump to pump the water. Okay, so I'll show you the I'll show you the switch when we get inside, but you only use this if you don't have city water, okay? Um, it's just using the, the fresh water tank and the pump, all the plumbing will work just like you have city water. Okay? Alright. Uh, your your just so you know your slide room is an is an accu slide. There are different types. This particular one is called an accu slide. In case you ever need to know that. <laughs> Down here you have your valves. You have your black and gray valves. Black tank is is toilet water and waste. Gray is sink and shower water, of course. Um, 
this is a black tank flush right here, right? So the, the, what this direction says here is basically is you always want to have this black valve open in the open position before you turn on uh, the water, before you put a hose on there and actually turn on the water, you want that open so too much pressure doesn't build up inside, right? So um, that's the only thing to remember. You always want the valve open before you, you turn that on. It'll flush out your tank, it'll clean off the sensors, it just does a good job. And if, if you got a working hose at the dump station that hasn't been run over or, <laughs> or anything like that, make sure you flush it. It's a good thing to do. This is just, uh, this is locked right now, but this is just a, a a shower basically an outside shower you can hose down kids and dogs and feet and whatever you need to hose down okay all right so this is your your 30 amp 30 foot cord right here all right you have a ladder on this which is great because the manufacturer states every 60 days you should inspect your roof um, so make sure you have somebody go up there you go up there yourself be very careful look at all the seal it make sure there's no cracking or separation uh, where water can get in. Look at the, the roofing material and the roofing attachments. Make sure they weren't damaged by low branches or road debris flying up there or anything like that. Just give it an inspection. It should be part of your general basic maintenance. And if you do keep it good and tight up there, you'll never have a water issue ever. It'll be bone dry inside period. So, okay. Um, that housing up there tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So this one takes a Furion camera. Uh, we sell them here, you can get them elsewhere. Just remember, um, if you get one, get the one that, the Furion camera that fits in that housing, okay? Alrighty. Uh, this is just, behind here, this is, these are, it's locked also, but um, that's where you hook up your campground cable or your a satellite if you have one, dish. Um, and it's also got a booster in it, so you'll see, a, a, I think it's a blue light, a blue LED glue glowing in there and you'll see some hookups, okay? Um, all right, so that, that does the outside here. Let's go inside and see what we've got. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so you have to have the Murphy bed in the up position in order to run the slide out in and out. So you always, you always have to have it in this position. You can't leave it down. Um, obviously to put it down, uh, you probably know this, but I'll I'll go through it here. You're just going to jackknife this flat, like so. Get your armrest out of the way. Then you just come over to here, and go like this, and drop it down. That's all there is to it. Very simple. You've got light here, plus you got a blue light there. Okay. So just remember, like I said, you see the slide room will hit here, so you always have to have it in the up stowed position before you try to bring the slide room in. Okay, now, um, let me get the lights on here, I'm sorry. You can see you have your awning light there, and um, to extend the awning, I have this in the right position, right? 90 degree angle, or 90 degrees to the frame, or to the wall, I mean. Anyway, so there you have that back in. Never leave the awning out unattended. Uh, if you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in so it doesn't get damaged by the weather. This is your slide room switch here. I told you about the water pump. You use this water pump here to pump water out of the fresh water tank. Um, if you don't have city water, you also use this to winterize the trailer. So keep in mind that's, that's, that's the pump you use to winterize the trailer. And then you just have your water heater on gas right there, your water heater on electric with electric heating element right there. But like I said, make sure there's water in the water heater tank before you turn it on, okay? Uh, then your levels, batteries charged, fresh water is empty, black one is empty, black two you disregard, and then there's gray. So it graduates up in one third increments. Once you get past two thirds, you gotta start thinking about dumping the gray in the black tank, okay? All right. This right here is a GFCI. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through that GFCI, so uh, even the one on the outside. So keep in mind that uh, if you're using something outside and it pops, you'll reset it right there. Okay, so you have your keys here. You have a uh, your cooktop right here, very simple. Um, microwave, works like every other microwave. 
that is your furnace right there your LP furnace and this is the thermostat for it you want it all the way over to the left uh, when you when you shut it off see when I click it to the right it'll turn on just make sure you go like this and click it to the left when you when you uh, shut it off so as soon as I shut it off the flame goes out it lights automatically but the flame goes out and but it'll still run for a couple minutes to cycle through okay but uh, um, this will always light it makes three attempts to light if for some reason it doesn't light within the three attempts you can shut it off and flip it back on again it'll start to cycle over again but you should never have to do that um, your TV here um, it has, it's on a swing out bracket as you can see plus it's got a strap so it doesn't bounce around and get hooked up in your slide room there okay um, the air conditioner you run it off these two controls right here on the ceiling this one here is thermostat and then you have two fan speeds and two cooling speeds all right um, this is your power converter now we talked about the power inverter up front that inverts uh, um, 12 volt DC to 110 AC well this is a converter it does just the opposite it's pretty much standard on trailers and when you're plugged into shore power um, it'll take 110 AC right here and these are 110 AC circuit breakers just like you have at home and then they're all labeled here okay then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side so we got 12 volt fuses and uh, they're all labeled right here so keep that in mind and this is also a battery tender so it'll send so much energy energy or battery needs as long as you're plugged in um, <coughs> excuse me and it will keep your battery charged if your battery is charged up it'll it'll just trickle a couple amps up there to maintain it if it's low it'll send 10 amps or whatever you need okay um, of course when you're pulling down the road uh, your tow vehicles alternator will send power through the charge line and charge your battery and when it's just sitting outside in the sun your solar panel is going to be charging the battery so you have your tow vehicle charging it the solar panel will charge it and then this as long as you're plugged in this power converter will charge it okay alrighty so your refrigerator is a uh, gas absorption refrigerator okay so what that means this will work on 110 AC it'll also work on LP gas so you turn it on right now it's set for A or for uh, electric automatic you can see the A means auto in the picture of the plug that's where you're going to use a 9 times out of 10 uh, the reason you use that it always seeks out electricity first and if it can't find it it'll light on gas or let's say you went away uh, you get up early in the morning it's going to be a super hot day and you all pack up and you go exploring for the day soon after you leave the the campground has a power failure it'll sense that and automatically light it on on uh, gas for you so it'll spoil your food okay so that's the mode button you can change it to just electricity just gas or auto electricity which that's where you want to keep it and also you want your the temperature up all the way like that I mean nine times out of ten you're gonna have it up all the way if you have to back it down if it starts frosting up or something then do it but during the summer it's gonna be up all the way this take this is gas absorption so it takes a long time to reach operating temperature it could take eight hours some in some cases so keep in mind uh, you have to you have to start it plenty of time in advance you can pull it down the road on gas so keep that in mind to keep it cool and to shut it off you want to hold the button just for a minute before it goes out okay alrighty so what else have we got here of course these are your uh, your bunks of course um, the sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower the toilet is an RV toilet so it's got a flush pedal and this toilet sits right over the black tank you can see we have some antifreeze in there now so let me get a better position here so you can't use it dry by dry I'm talking about the black tank directly below when you pull into the campground it's going to be dry because you flushed it when you left the last campground or okay or, or you're you know whenever you used the last um, so when you get to the campground and put and pull in your spot you're going to uh, uh, hook up your power and your water then you'll come in here and you'll put one dose of chemical in the bowl right then you'll step on the pedal and water will come swirling out because it's hooked up to water 
and you'll stand that on that long enough to put about a gallon or so of water in the tank below along with the chemical. Um, if you don't, it's considered using it dry. If you don't do that, if you use it empty, um, the smell will be terrible and it can get clogged up. So you're always going to want to start with a, a dose of chemical and at least a gallon of water in your tank, okay? All right. And it does have a fan up here also. And you have another vent here, so. Okay, so let me look around. You can drop um, your, this table down onto these cleats here and use the back cushion to fill in the space and turn this into a bed. Okay. The emergency windows are here. This is not just a little crooked. That's all from being closed up. But these go up and down and stay wherever, you, whatever position you need them to. Okay. All right, so let me look here, see if I forgot anything. I think we're in good shape. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting your roof. That should be part of your basic maintenance. And uh, uh, odds are you won't have to do anything to it for years, but that's why you're inspecting it, just to make sure, okay? Um, you're protecting your investment, so it's a good thing to do. Also, like I stated, this is winterized, so the water's been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze, and the water heater is bypassed and empty right now. So um, when, you, when you're going to use it again in the spring or the summer, make sure that, you, uh, that the water heater tank is full before you turn on any energy source, okay? Okay, oh, one last thing, I'm sorry. This is your... Uh, carbon monoxide LP gas detector right here. It should always be green. If it goes off, it's telling you that uh, um, uh, it's detected carbon monox monoxide or LP gas. Um, so take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off the front, figure out what's going on. Also, if it beeps very slowly, the same tone but very slowly, it's telling you that the battery's low. It's a low battery alarm. So it does three carbon monoxide, LP gas, and a low battery alarm, okay? All right, so there we go. All right, so thank you very much.